Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these watches and you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel here at Watchbox Reviews. Then I could send you my best to your inbox on a daily basis, and I'd really appreciate it. If you like this watch, you can buy it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing an all time great Vacheron Constantin Patrimony Traditionnel Chronograph 49172 in 18 karat white gold. And I realize you might be a little bit confused. Patrimony Traditionnel, isn't that two separate model lines? Well, when this 49172 reference debuted in 2009, they were one. The lines were split in 2015. So today, because it features Dauphine style hands, this would be part of the Traditionnel collection, but we'll just call it the 49172. 42 millimeters in white gold. This is a gorgeous traditional Geneva style manual wind chronograph. Relatively slim considering 11.3 millimeters thick with a sloped bezel. It easily slides underneath any tight dress cuff or sleeve. From lug to lug, it has impressive stance, but it's not oversized. 50 millimeters with tightly downturned lugs. I always say that if you have a smaller male wrist, which I define as about 14 to 16 and a half centimeters circumference, you want 50 millimeters or fewer lug to lug. This watch certainly makes the cut. So if you have that smaller wrist, you're good to go. 22 millimeters is the lug spacing, so it has a broad stance on the wrist and it has a nice planted feel thanks to the broad strap. Also, with a 22 millimeter strap, it's a standard size. You'll have many OEM and aftermarket accessory options. You can see that the profile of the lugs is perfectly suited to a smaller wrist as there is a tight invert ducktail or a, a downturn to the end of the lugs so that this watch will easily curve around the tight fold of a small wrist periphery, and there's a semi-curved spring bar that allows the strap to be drilled closer to the case, allowing the total distance between pivots to be narrower, and you can pull it straight down around the tight curve of a small wrist. The strap itself is black, semi-gloss, medium rectangular scale alligator leather, as you can see, unbolstered with a folded edge and a monotone stitch on the underside, supple calfskin, and it comes with a full white gold deployment clasp. Now, you will note white gold, fully finished inside and out, a combination of media blasted and polished. You'll see the Maltese cross motif that is the icon of the manufacturer on the inside of the clasp. You'll see it on the buckle of the clasp, and you will see it on the dial of the watch as it is a recurring theme with Vacheron. Now Vacheron has styled the entirety of the watch. It's all sensuous curves, as in the case band, but also sharp masculine creases and folds. I particularly like the slight setback of the case band below the midpoint that continues into the lugs. It's sharp and it's kind of attention to detail that sets a fine watch apart, a great watch apart from the merely good. You also note that the coining of the case back is highly distinctive and gives sharp definition to the case back, in contrast to the more transitional profile of the bezel, which is shallow and stepped above the mid case. You'll note that the watch, entirely in high polish, wears that polish well, as its traditional proportions and lines prevent it from appearing garish. Now, the dial is silver opaline, which is to say very lightly frosted silver metallic. There are several metal coats, colors, and textures on the dial. The basic opaline matte has a light glowing quality in direct light rather than the explosive quality of a sunburst grained dial. You can see that there's a darker texture about the sub-registers of the timepiece with chronograph minutes as well as constant seconds countersunk and blessed by their own miniature railroad style sector scales outboard a tachymeter as you can see calibrated in kilometers per hour allowing you to move and time relatively quick things between 1,000 and 60 kilometers per hour, and it also helps to disguise the disparity between movement size and case size. Like the Patek Philippe 5070, Vacheron does a good job of that with this timepiece. You also note the inward cantilevered, applied, diamond polished, and faceted, largely handmade and hand placed white gold hour indices. We'll get a little bit closer to the dial now that the watch is off the wrist. The detailing is superb, and as you can see, the hands are actually creased down their center and half frosted 
for higher contrast, and there is a blackened gold lancet-style counterweighted seconds hand for the chronograph function, and a matching chronograph minutes hand, also blackened. That Maltese cross motif I mentioned, blazing at 12 o'clock on the logo. And on the crown profile, you can see vintage inspiration is strong with this one as a antiquated lozenge or rectangular pusher profile recalls the great Vacheron chronographs of the first half of the 20th century. Maltese cross, once more, on the crown. Turn it all over, and one might argue that this is actually the main event. Let's get this in focus and enjoy the vista that is the Vacheron Constantin caliber 1141. Now, what is it? Well, it's La Magna 2310 Bausch, which has been used in everything from the Omega Speedmasters that actually went to the moon, in which case it was the caliber 321, as well as in luxury watches from Roger Dupuis, Breguet, and of course, Patek Philippe. It's an old school, slow beat, 18,000 vibration per hour manual wind chronograph caliber, and of course, 48 hours power reserve manual wind, and a big slow beating 2.5 hertz balance. You'll note that the size of the balance, as well as its Breguet overcoil hairspring, are both relied upon to make the watch precise in the absence of a high beat rate by making the balance almost one third the diameter of the movement. That's how watch engineers and watchmakers in previous eras would have obtained reliable rates, as well as resistance to shock and vibration. Now, the overcoil profile helps the watch to keep good time in every position with respect to gravity. Concentric beating, that's what you get from an overcoil. And you might be able to see that there's a very narrow gold wire between the balance cock and the bridge for the terminal end of the train for the escape wheel, and, and that gold wire is a hairspring hooking guard. You'll see this on watches from the mid-century and back. It's designed to prevent an overcoil from getting accidentally hung up on the regulator, and to prevent the coils of the overcoil from accidentally doubling up over themselves in the event of shock. Again, old school is the term. 21 joules adjusted in five positions like a chronometer and beautifully executed. You can see it as a traditional lateral cut a column wheel chronograph. And I'm actually going to cycle the chronograph function and point out the column wheel, which is the function selector. Note the horns and the levers that interact with it, as well as this intermediate driving wheel and the junction between the clutch and the chronograph center wheel when I start the chronograph. Now it's disengaged. You'll see the clutch, the driving wheel, and the intermediate wheel come in contact with the center wheel. That is why you want a traditional chronograph architecture, because it keeps no secrets. You can watch it moving into position. You can watch everything from the horns, the levers, the column wheel, the center wheel, the driving wheels, the clutch. And of course, when you stop the mechanism, bum, 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 we're going to stop it and we're going to reset it. Now you're going to watch the recentering hammers act on the heart cams at the center and reset the chronograph. Just like that, keeping no secrets. The column wheel is crisp, positive, audible, a tactile pleasure to use, and you will appreciate it. When I turn the watch flush to the camera, you can see the jewel countersinks, the screw countersinks, as well as the edges of all of the levers and bridges glowing, and that's because they are all mirror polished. You can see that beautiful, optically smooth, hand-finished, rounded, glossy gleam. That is not a machined bevel. That is done by hand. That is what is called true hand-laid anglage. Though it's spare, there is also a perfectly aligned linear Cote de Genève across the bridges, perfectly aligned from bridge to bridge. When I turn the watch to the camera, you can see every surface that's turning black, especially the screw heads, is black polished, the highest standard of optical finish, or poly noir. And when you get close, to this watch, you will notice even more from the black polished Swansnick fine adjustment mechanism to the fact that the spokes of the wheels themselves are hand beveled. It is a feast for the eyes, and hopefully for the eyes with the assistance of a high quality loop. You can see and you can purchase this Vacheron chronograph 49172 on our website.